Hey everyone, Ash here with the Better Than Yesterday blog. So what even is financial peace and what does it look like? Financial peace can look different for everyone because if you haven't figured it out yet, we are all different. Financial peace is freedom from payments, not living paycheck to paycheck, having an emergency fund, having a retirement plan, and having achievable financial goals. When you achieve financial peace, you have nothing limiting or stopping you from living the life you dream. That's the true definition of financial peace. So instead of giving you examples like I normally do, I will just tell you about my financial peace journey. Hopefully this will help you see what financial peace looks like and get you excited to achieve your own financial peace. Remember, financial peace is not just a destination. It's a way of life. So here's how we got started. In September of 2018, my husband proposed and I was in debt $60,000. Of course, this was including my home, but thankfully we had to attend premarital counseling, which brought up the subject of finances. For one of our assignments, we had to figure out how we were going to structure our finances once we were married. Fast forward and we decided to start the Dave Ramsey Financial Peace University. Yes, we got on board with the baby steps. For those of you that aren't familiar with the baby steps, here's how they work and what we did. Baby step number one is to save $1,000 for your starter emergency fund. Boom, perfect. We both already had that. Keep in mind that we are still engaged at this point, not yet married, so our finances are not yet combined but we are working on this as a team. Therefore, I had to save $1,000 and my husband had to save $1,000. Baby step number two is to pay off all of your debt, except for your house, using the debt snowball, which is paying off your debts from smallest to largest. Since my house loan was less than $50,000, we included that with our baby step number two. And 16 months and a wedding later, all of our debt, including the house, was paid off. Baby step number three is to save a fully funded emergency fund, which is three to six months of household expenses. We knocked this out shortly after paying off the house. When we were paying off debt, we were only living on 32% of our income, and we kept living on 32% until we built up our emergency fund. Now, baby step four, five, and six are all worked on together. And baby step number four is to invest 15% of your household income into retirement. We had already been investing through our jobs during all the baby steps, but only around 7% of our household income. So we increased that percentage to 15% once we had our fully funded emergency fund. Baby step number five is to save for children's college funds. And this currently isn't applicable to us, so we can skip over this step. Baby step number six was to pay off our home early, and we already did that in baby step number two. And the last step is to build wealth and give generously. This is currently the step that we're at. Man, I am so thankful that we went through the baby steps because I can't emphasize enough the weight off of your shoulders when you pay off your debt. You don't realize how great financial peace is until you get there because you don't understand how heavy the weight is until you get rid of it. Once we got all of our debt taken care of, we really started to look at our financial goals and where we wanted to be at in life. So we decided to set up goals and accounts to get us there. And this is what we did. Of course, we built our emergency fund and we actually have a separate savings account for our emergency fund on its own. And this has a great amount of financial peace that comes from this account. But to be honest, I do sometimes forget about it. We don't want to use it at all, which is why we've set ourselves up so that we don't have to dip into our emergency fund with the following accounts. Next, we made a vehicle checking account where we transfer our monthly vehicle payment to build up the account for fuel, vehicle repairs and maintenance, self-insurance for vehicle accidents, and cash for vehicle upgrades. The financial piece that comes from the vehicle account alone is awesome. I don't know about you, but I always grew up playing the $20 fuel game where you only have $20 to put in for gas and you try to get the pump to stop right at $20. So to be able to fill up my tank every time and not think twice about it still gets me pretty excited. 
We also just have a regular joint savings, which consists of our Christmas savings, random annual payments, and our baby fund. For those of you that know us, we are not pregnant, just prepared. And finally, we have our construction savings for the house that my husband has been wanting to build since before we were ever together. I know that you probably think that we're crazy for having all of these separate accounts, but separating these accounts prevents you from dipping into them. It also adds to our peace of mind, knowing that we've allocated funds for each specific situation. Now that you have our financial background, at this point, my husband and I are feeling pretty good about our financial situation. We were living on 43% of our monthly income and saving the rest. We had already experienced a great amount of financial peace. We both had decent paying jobs and life is great, right? Well, think again. Life decided to get in our way. A baby decided to come sooner than we planned and left way sooner than we wanted. And no one prepares you for the cost of a miscarriage, even when you have good health insurance. If we never got our finances in order, that devastating event could have haunted us financially for way longer than it did. Instead, we paid for everything in one payment. The only setback was not putting anything in savings that month. Financial peace is more than just getting what you want out of life. It's being prepared for the unexpected so that you can recover way faster than you normally would. If I had to make medical payments for the next several months, like I'm sure a lot of people out there have to do, that would be the worst feeling in the world. Because when I got that medical bill, it literally made me sick. Not because of the financial setback, but because of the reminder of what happened. I know people go through that all the time, and it is awful. Being prepared for those situations gives yourself financial peace in the midst of something terrible. And that is just one of the great things about financial peace. And it's something that people don't often talk about. Normally, we only discuss the sunshine of financial peace and not the rain. Now, I'm a very private person. No one except family knew about our miscarriage. And now I'm telling the world, which is something I'm still not comfortable with. But if it helps you see what financial peace really looks like and why you need it in your life, then I'll gladly tell you my story to help you get there. Okay, now that the rain is out of the way, let's look at the sunshine. You already know that I'm a private person and I'm also not a risk taker. I enjoyed my steady income and I loved the work that I did. But one of our long-term goals was for me to be able to work for myself and to be able to raise our kids. My husband travels a lot, so we wanted to set myself up with flexibility for our future family and travel lifestyle. After our reign, we decided we needed a little sunshine. So my husband and I reviewed our budget and cut our steady income in half. Now I'm working for myself and doing what I love, helping people and businesses with their finances and taxes. And I also decided to take another risk starting this blog. A blog really isn't fitting for a private person, but I love helping others more than I do being reserved. This is the best way for me to reach out to as many people as possible about how to budget, fixing their finances and sharing tax tips. So I took the risk. And I never would have if it wasn't for the financial peace and freedom that my husband and I have. So if you have a dream that you're too scared to pursue, then getting your finances in order may be that extra push that you need to follow your dream. Because you deserve to be happy. And you deserve to live a life that you love. Don't let anything hold you back. Take control of your finances so that you can have financial peace in the sunshine and in the rain. So what does financial peace look like for you?